Well, hello to all and welcome back to In My Shed. I'm your host, BC. What the heck is this contraption on my bench? It is probably about as old as me. I would say made in the 60s. It's a very robust piece of kit and would originally have been in a tool room for a large manufacturer or some sort of facility that uses a lot of taps. A lot of mechanisms put together into one group to make the thing work. Very simple, very reliable and long lasting which is evident by it still being here. I would say the maximum diameter of tap it can grind would be just under three inches and it'll take a tap about ten and a half inches long so it's a fairly big bit of unit. Bit of a run around that obviously is the knob you operate from. Here is the cam one lobe for each flute and there are a series of spare cams from three through to eight flute and you can use them left hand and right hand. The cam operates a lever which we'll get a picture of later on. That lever rotates a rod over the back. The rod over the back has a groove in it that pushes on a through rod against this adjusting nut at the front. Now it's marked off in inches of course being an old unit but by undoing that knob it allows the rod to operate further against the stop and tilt the whole body further. If you rotate the handle you might just pick up the whole body is rocking backwards and forwards and that is changing the distance from the tap to the grinding wheel. So this is actually a form relief grinder giving radial relief only. Now the tap is held in a V-block up against the centre so it's dead accurate there on a centre at the back end. Now there's two knurled knobs here that one says tap and that's for adjusting the V-block to centre the tap. The other says set and that is used to set the position of the tap to the cam so that the flute will be in the correct position as you pass the grinding wheel and that is something you'll see later when I put it up on a tool and cutter grinder. But once you've set that for the number of lobes on the cam, any tap with the same number of flutes should just drop in there and you'll be able to use it straight away. Now the rods are adjustable lengthwise so the main frame can move through this clamp here. This centre is just held by a very very simple clamp. Swivel it around a little bit and you can see there's a lever here that operates on the rear rod. Very, very simple mechanism. Still in view, yes. Okay, there's the lever operating the rod on the back to this shaft, which is spring loaded, and the shaft has on the other side of it a V machined in, and it is that V that pushes on the push rod to go through the centre. Here's another view at the back of the sliding block for the V clamp. And you can see this rod rotating and this part of the jig moving up and down. That's how you form the radial relief. Now the body of the attachment has two clamping bolts and it swivels on the base plate. That's how you set up the lead angle on the tap to be ground. Just repeating what was done in the original manufacturing process. So it's fairly, fairly easy to go. Okay now, let's get to the nitty gritty. Once our event feed, move into the work. One pass for each point. Another sound.
Now we get a bit of quiet on the job. The only real drawback to this method of grinding is the lead on the tap is increased every time you grind the tap back. You can of course truncate the end off the tap to bring it back to length. However, that means you don't have a centre to grind it again. Now this particular wheel is 150mm diameter which is the maximum size allowable for that belt speed but you'll notice that the finish on the tap is very very good. The faster the speed with the grinding wheel or the higher the peripheral speed the better the finish that you get up to the maximum speed the grinding wheel allows. Over the maximum speed you get a big kapow, it's a bit bloody dangerous. Slower the speed, the coarser the finish to the point where at very low speeds you actually dress the grinding wheel back. But as you can see, up against the size of the grinder, a 3 inch diameter tap would fit in there, up to 10 inches long. Quite a good attachment and not a bad piece of kit for being as old as me. That's all for now from In My Shed. Let's hope this video comes out better than the last. Bye for now.